In this video, we're going to talk about installing an electronic tool setter, or ETS, on a Tormach milling machine. We're going to go over the installation itself, as well as talk about using the ETS to touch off your tools manually and automatically. And also, in some situations, you can use the ETS to set the Z-axis work coordinate of your part, as long as you set the ETS on top of that part that you're trying to measure. So we'll talk about that too. Today we're demonstrating on the 770MX that's behind me here. The installation portion of the video will apply to the PCNC machines as well as 770 and 1100M and MX mills, and also the XS Tech and 24R router. Usage of the ETS will apply to all Tormach milling machines and routers, but using the ETS to set the Z-axis work coordinate will apply only to the PCNCs and 770 and 1100M and MX machines. The 1500MX, the XS Tech, and the 24R all have their ETS fixed in a specific location and can't be moved to set on top of the part. So we're going to go over the installation section first and then we'll dive into using the ETS to touch off your tools manually and automatically. For our first step, we're going to connect the cable of the ETS to the accessory port on the side of the electrical cabinet of our machine. So you can see I've got the end of our cable here that I've fished through a gap in the enclosure panels. And we've got two accessory input ports here. We need to make sure that for the ETS we connect that to the second accessory input. If you're working on a 24R or an XS Tech, the accessory port location is different, so we'll make sure to have a couple photos showing those locations as well for you. After connecting a ETS or a probe to a machine, I always do a quick sanity check to make sure I plugged it into the correct port. So we can see that really easily if we go to the probe and ETS tab and then ETS setup, and we have a label here of accessory input two with an LED. So if you touch the top of that ETS, it'll light up every time you touch it. So that just makes sure we put the cable in the correct port. We go to the probe setup tab, you see the exact same thing for accessory input one. And you can also see this on the status tab here, accessory input two and accessory input one. If I hit it again, it does change as well. But going to the ETS setup page just gives us the one input just to make sure we're in the right one versus showing both where we can still be confused. After that, we're just gonna follow along the instructions on the ETS setup page. So we're gonna set our spindle nose reference next, which tells the machine where the top of the uh, tool setter is located at. You can see here that uh, my button ETS spindle reference is already labeled green. Because this is an MX, the spindle nose reference will be kept after you e-stop or restart the machine. But if you're on a PCNC, a 24R or an XS Tech uh, or an M machine, you'll have to read this spindle nose reference every time you boot up the machine or hit e-stop. So in order to set that spindle nose reference, uh, what we're gonna do is just jog down our spindle um, about an inch above wherever we have the ETS mounted. Uh, if you're permanently mounting the ETS, obviously you'd have it in that location. In my case, uh, I'm just demonstrating and I'm gonna take the ETS off after we're done here. So I just have it set on the table and I'm gonna jog a little bit down and for an MX machine we do have the two drive dogs on the bottom of the spindle we're going to make sure that we don't touch on those and that we jog in between them so I'm about an inch above the ETS here so I'll just hit our ETS spindle reference button since I already do have this reference it's going to ask me if I want to do it again I'll just hit OK and our machine comes down and touches it and then goes back up. So this is why it's pretty important to make sure you have the ETS plugged into the correct port because if it wasn't, our spindle would just keep coming down um, until it either bottoms out or faults, which we obviously don't want. The next step in our instructions is to set the G37 position for our ETS. This has a dual function where the Z axis position gives a clearance plane that's higher than the longest tool you'll ever have installed in the spindle and try to touch off with the ETS. 
This just makes sure that you don't crash into the ETS with your rapid move down before you start actually touching off the tool. And then your X and Y coordinates are just telling the machine where the center of the ETS is within the machine travel. So in my case, I'm just having the ETS sit on the table so I can move it around to find the center. If you have the ETS mounted on your table or on a fixture uh, permanently, then you'll want to jog the machine to find the center of the ETS. And I always install a tool in the spindle when I'm trying to find this. It's just easier to eyeball than with an empty spindle. So this is pretty close to the center where I have it right now. I'm just going to jog my Z-axis up about seven inches or so. Um, like I said, you just need to make sure that this position is higher than you'll ever have a tool in the spindle, just to make sure we don't crash down. Then we hit the set G37 ETS position button here. In my case, I had to have it set, so it's just gonna ask me if I wanna redo it, which is fine. And then the coordinates of wherever the G37 position are uh, is shown on the screen here. This is in uh, G53 machine coordinates, so there's no work offset or tool offset applied to these coordinates. So if all you intend to use the ETS for is uh, tool touch off, then that is the setup complete. But if you ever want to use the ETS to set the Z-axis coordinate for your work coordinate, then we have a couple more instructions to do. For that, I'll remove the tool I have in my spindle. And I have a one, two, three block here that we're gonna use. Um, we need to have some kind of reference surface in order to find the nose of the spindle because what we have to do is actually determine the actual height of the spindle. We have a default value that's already populated but we do wanna make sure we find the true value of that. So I'm gonna use my one, two, three block for that. It's just a handy size for this. And I have tool zero set to make sure we don't have a tool offset applied. So then I'm going to jog my spindle down and touch my one, two, three blocks to the face of the spindle. Now we are on a MX machine here, so we are gonna make sure we touch on the face of the spindle, not on the bottom of the drive dogs. We're gonna go between them. So keep jogging down here. And I always jog farther down than my reference surface and I step up to make sure that it can slide underneath there rather than stepping down on top of it because then we're actually compressing that reference surface. So I'm gonna change to step mode in thousands and start stepping up. There we go. And now I can get one, my one, two, three block in there. This is fairly good as it is. It's pretty tight as I drag it but I'm going to come back down a little bit and then change to 10 thousandths increments just to make sure I have the best accuracy I can get. We're stepping back up again. There, and I can just get my one, two, three lock in again. So there we go. Then, if we read our instructions here, we want to set our z-axis work coordinate here to zero. So I can either highlight this and type zero, then press enter, or I can press our zero z button here. That's what we want. And next, jog back up, high enough to get our ETS on top of our reference surface. We'll just set it here. Jog back down a little bit. Too far. I didn't hit it, but a little close for comfort. And then, again, making sure we're between the drive dogs, not on them, we're going to hit the move and set ETS height button here. And then we came down, and you can see our height changed just a little bit. So we do want to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. But we know now the height of this. So if we want to set our z-axis work coordinate, then we can use the ETS for that. Uh, we'll show the right screen to do that in a couple moments, but we're going to show uh, touching off tools uh, next. That's all of the setup we need to do completed then. Next we'll go over how to set a tool offset manually. So 
So I've got my tool back in my spindle, and I'm gonna go to our offsets page here. I'm going to enter a tool number here, or whatever tool we wanna to touch off, we do have to have that offset call, and the tool in the spindle, obviously. I'm just gonna to type tool 100, because that's one I don't already have an offset for. Give it a brief description. This is a half inch mini shear. And then all I need to do is hit the move and set tool length button. Well, what I've done is I've stepped off of the G37 position a little bit just to show that that will be corrected as we uh, go and touch off that tool. And I do have my rapids turned down a little bit just because I have the ETS sitting on the table. It's not fashioned to anything, so I don't want it skidding off. So I'll hit the button here. And then you can see that our tool length has now populated with a value of 3.351 inches. If you're ever not sure if you have the right offset or if you didn't complete all the steps of the setup, you can always verify that the numbers that an ETS is giving you by having a scale or a ruler or a tape measure and just hold it up to the spindle. And this is a little over three and a quarter inches, so that's just right. So on Tormach machines, all of our tool lengths are always positive from the face of the spindle. So whatever value you have for this length here is always what you're gonna see in the tool table. So that's just a quick way to have a, a little sanity check to make sure everything is how it should. We do have a check mark here for Z only. What this is for is if you have a large diameter tool where you don't want to be right over the center line of the ETS, you, the insert or tip of the tool is big enough that it won't actually hit on the ETS. You can then jog over to the side by some amount, enable that checkbox and then hit move and set tool length again. And I'm going to step over even more just to be a bit dramatic. You see that we didn't move to our G37 X and Y position. Wherever the machine is sitting is where we're going to start feeding down in Z in order to apply that tool length. And I'm obviously going to stop this because we're not over our ETS now. And that does give an error in this case, which is okay. I'm going to jog back up. So if you touch off a tool with that Z only checkbox, once you touch off that tool, that checkbox will automatically uncheck itself. Uh, so it's only gonna apply for one tool. If you have two or three tools that you need to step over for, you will have to check that box for each of those tools. If you wanna to touch off tools automatically in a program or check the length of them, we can do that as well. I'm going to demonstrate in the MDI line, but these exact same commands can just be inserted in your program. So if I type G37 and press enter, you can see that we're running the exact same routine that we did on the offsets page when we hit the move and set tool length button. So we're just finding our tool length here again. In this case, it was one tenth different from what we had before. So G37 is all you need to specify to touch off a tool, but you can also give an H argument. And if you give an H argument, what you're specifying to Pathpilot is what tool offset to apply the length that it finds to. If you don't have an H value in there, it just assumes that you wanna apply the length to whatever tool offset is active. But if for whatever reason I wanted to apply that length to a diff different offset number, such as H101, I could do that. Another argument you can give is a P value. P is always gonna be a very small value, uh, generally five, five thousandths, you know, maybe 10, 15, just depends. Uh, so whatever you want this value to be, this is going to specify a range above and below the current offset. So in this case, 3.3507, and it's just going to compare that. It's not setting the offset. So if I change my tool length from the 3.35 inches we had already to three inches, and then I run my command of G37 
P.005. We still come down and touch the tool. But in this case, we'll get an alarm on the status screen and the program we were running will stop. So we have a message here of measured length 3.3505 inches of tool number 100 exceeds tolerance 0 0.005. If the value that we found was within that tolerance band, then we wouldn't get this message. Our program would just continue on with whatever's next. So I'll clear that. And then we have one final argument you can give to a G37 command, G37 E. Uh, again, 0.05, this is gonna be a small value again. So I will specify that E is not currently released in Pathpilot. This will be added with a future release. But what E does is, it's another form of checking the tool length, but E specifically is checking if the tool is longer than the previous value rather than shorter or longer, like P. There may be situations where you want to specify different values for a tool being shorter versus a tool being longer. So this just gives you an additional option since those two scenarios do have different circumstances in which case they happen. So just another option. Uh, as I said, this will be released in a future version of Pathpilot. You can also combine both P and E in the same command. Finally, we'll demonstrate using the ETS to set off the Z-axis work coordinate on the top of a workpiece. So here I've got a block of aluminum just sitting on my table, and then I put the ETS on top of that block. And I still have my tool in the spindle. We don't have to remove it and touch off on the face of the spindle like we did previously. As long as we have our tool offset set appropriately, then you can just use whatever tool in the spindle you want. You do need to make sure you're in the work coordinate that you want to set first. If you want to change that, say go to G55, which I'll do in this case, then you do that in the MDI line, and then we are in G55 now. Then we'll go to the offsets tab, and rather than the tool offsets tab that we were in before, we're going to go to the work offsets tab, and then on the right side here, we have a move and set work offset button. So I'm going to jog in place first. That's fine. Uh, we don't specifically have to jog as long as we're above the ETS. It just goes a little quicker if we are. Then I'll hit my button here. And we come down and touch on top of it. And then you can see that our Z-axis work coordinate for G55 did change. If we're not sure if we have the tool offset set appropriately or we are in the work, right work coordinate, we can also come over and check by jogging down. So that the tip of our tool is right at the top of our workpiece. And we can check our Z when it's really close to zero. And in this case, yes, we are right at the top of the material. So we know we set that appropriately. Then we can just set the X and Y coordinates for our workpiece and start machining. So I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Tormach Tech Support. Either give us a call or open up a tech support case. We'll be happy to help. Thank you.